Let's take a look at piecewise functions. This is a topic found in algebra courses as well as pre-calculus. And the name piecewise function implies the function is made of pieces. We can see in this particular function, in the graphical form, we have three pieces. And in the equation form, there are also three pieces. Let's look at that parabola piece, which is y equals x squared. Notice that is defined where the domain is x is less than 2. It's strictly less than 2 because the point 2 comma 4 is not included in the curve. Then we have f of x equals 6, which is just that single ordered pair at 2 comma 6. And then we have f of x equals, I'll read it as negative x plus 10 for x is strictly greater than 2, but also less than or equal to 6. The y-intercept of that linear function, that third piece, would be 10, and the slope is negative 1. So we're going to be giving you a graph asking you to, to come up with the equation form. We'll also give you the equation of a piecewise function asking you to come up with the graph. We'll start by giving you the graphical form. This function is made of three pieces. The first piece, which will be this one, is a horizontal line. Every point on this line has the y-coordinate of 2. So this equation has is of the form f of x equals 2, but it is only defined from negative 6 through negative 2, including the endpoint at negative 6, not including the endpoint at negative 2. So that's what that piece looks like. Now the middle piece is part of an absolute value function. It is the parent function shifted down two units, so f of x equals the absolute value of x minus 2. This one is defined from negative 2 to 2, including the endpoints, because the dots are colored in. The last piece is a linear function with a slope of negative 1. It would go through the y-intercept at 6, so the equation of this function is negative x plus 6. It is defined from 2 through 6, not including the endpoint at 2, but including the endpoint at 6. Now it is very important that we pay attention to which endpoints are included. Because as you know, something is a function only if, for each input, there's exactly one output. So if the circle at the left end of this linear function were colored in, this would no longer be a function, right? So pay attention to that. Right, now the next example, we have a graph. And it's again made of three pieces. I have a quadratic piece, I have a linear function that's constant, and I have a linear function with a slope of 1. We'll start with this quadratic function. That is the basic parent function f of x equals x squared. This is defined for x is less than or equal to 1 because the one that endpoint is included. Note the arrow on the top left indicates this continues forever. The middle piece is a constant function, f of x equals 3. This is defined from 1 to 2, not including the endpoint at 1, but including the endpoint at 2. The last piece is a linear function. This one is the identity function because it would go through the origin and it has a slope of 1. So this function is f of x equals x, but it is defined x is greater than 2. Now while it's convenient to label each piece of the graph, we typically by convention write the equation form of a piecewise function like this. f of x equals x squared if x is less than or equal to 1. 3 if x is between 1 and 2, not including the endpoint of 1, and x if x is greater than 2. And we might put a, a left bracket around those three pieces. So in the next one, we'll give you the definition of the function and we're asking you to graph it. So we'll start by a quadratic piece x squared if x is less than 0. So that would be graphed this way, not including the endpoint of 0, right? It would have an open circle. 
f of x equals 2 if x equals 0. So all that is is an ordered pair at 0 comma 2. And the third piece is f of x equals 2x plus 1 if x is greater than 0. So that is a line, a linear function, going through the y-axis at 1 with a slope of 2. And there would be an open circle at 0 comma 1. Now just to let you know, I did type this into desmos.com, so that is a helpful tool for making sense of piecewise functions. How you would type these into a graphing utility like Desmos, you would write f of x equals x squared, and then not have a comma or a space, but right next to that have these brackets that say x is less than zero. That tells the graphing utility that you don't want the whole curve, you want pieces of the curve. 